asbestos issue is not a thing of the past, it continues to this day. We want to end this man-made disaster. So let's ban asbestos. It's a good uh, introduction to the talk I'm about to give. We're going to talk about toxic corporate crime, which uh, in Italy they actually deal with as a criminal matter. Uh, businessmen have been put in jail in the past for running chemical plants where over 100 workers died of bladder cancer from handling notorious dye intermediates in the 1970s. Uh, company doctor too. Uh, and uh, so in Italy they prosecute or at least they investigate death on the job as potentially a criminal matter. And uh, in this case we're looking at a gentleman who ran a business um, he inherited this business. Is this it? Oh, um, so this is uh, the factory that they had, the biggest factory that they had. The, the business was called Eternit. They had uh, made asbestos cement products all over Europe. They had factories all over Europe, but this was the biggest one in Casale Monferrato in northern Italy, near Turin. And uh, at this plant, uh, this was the only industry in the area. It's a beautiful agricultural area. Uh, the only industry there, there were no shipyards, no other factories. And it employed as many as 2,000 people. The plant operated from 1906 to 1986. And it was owned by this family, largely owned by this family called the schmidt -Heinies. And uh, so the first uh, slide is a gentleman who inherited this business. Uh, he's 66 years old today. He uh, became the chief executive officer of Etunit in 1976 at the age of 29. And at that time, uh, uh, he uh, was well aware of what was going on in the plants around the world, including the Italian plant. Uh, this has all come out in the trial. The Italians uh, had prosecuted his subordinates, the uh, officers of Etunit, in Italy and uh, convicted some of them in 1983 and others in 1993 of a kind of negligent homicide, negligent manslaughter. Uh, these uh, cases ultimately were overturned on grounds of statutes of limitations and uh, schmidt -Heine was prosecuted for creating an environmental disaster, a crime that did not have a statute of limitations problem because the contamination of this uh, environment from this factory and the crushing of the off-spec broken sheets and pipes, uh, the uh, dumping of the wastes on the Po River where people would use it for uh, recreational purposes, having no idea that it was dangerous, people dying from mesothelioma, the, me me the, the epidemiologists mapping the excess deaths from mesothelioma out as far as about 10 miles from the uh, plant, showing the rates of mesothelioma decreasing with greater distance from the factory. Uh, so they, obviously in 1976, there was a whole lot known about the lethality of asbestos and uh, Mr. schmidt Heine knew about that. Uh, these are uh, some of the victims uh, uh, leading uh, in, in a parade. Uh, the people uh, at the front are Nic Nicola Bruno and uh, Bruno Pesce, who were unionists who worked in the factory in Casale Monferrato in the 1970s and first became alarmed about the asbestos hazards. So the, uh, the tr trial went on for two years. Uh, Eternit Justicia, Eternit Justice, signs uh, all over Casale. I walked into a, a, um, a square in the town and on all four sides of this public square there were Eternit Justicia signs hanging from the buildings, including a privately owned bank. Uh, Everyone has been touched by this who lives there. Uh, they have family members, they have uh, friends who've uh, gotten sick and died from the asbestos. They have over 50 cases of mesothelioma a year in this rural area, Kazali. And so in, uh, uh, I testified in the trial, I testified about uh, what was known by the big asbestos companies in the world uh, by the 1970s. Uh, about the lethality of asbestos and talked about some of the meetings they had had, most importantly one that they had in 1971, which had a number of men from Eternit there. And uh, so finally the court re reported its verdict in February of uh, uh, two years ago, February 2012. Um, 
the Schmidt-Heine was compared by the appeals court. The trial court sentenced him to 16 years in jail and told him to pay about $100 million worth of interim damages to the victims. And the reading of the verdict took three hours with the names of all the individual victims and 30,000 euros for this one and 70,000 euros for that one. And it was a, uh, just went on for three hours. The judges stood for the whole three hours and everyone in that courtroom had to stand for the whole three hours, including the mayors of municipalities and all the lawyers representing all the parties had to stand up for three hours while this verdict was read. Then it went to appeal, and the appeals court judge was quoted as comparing Schmidt-Heine with Hitler because one of the documents that came out in this, in this investigation, uh, in civil cases we have legal discovery in the United States. In this criminal case, they set the police in, and they, they visited the public relations firm that Schmidt-Heine had hired back in 1984 and just seized a bunch of documents. And so from this, we see that they had a meeting in uh, Neuss in Germany, uh, shortly after Schmidt-Heine became the CEO of, the, of this multinational asbestos enterprise, and he meets with 35 or so of his managers. At the end of it, the document says, quotes Schmidt-Heine as saying, some of you were shocked at how dangerous asbestos is. We have to make sure this doesn't happen with the workers. And this was counted as the beginning of the cover-up, which the, the, the court said delayed the ban on asbestos by 10 years in Italy. And, uh, so Schmidt-Heine was compared with Hitler having the meeting in January of 1942 in Wannsee outside of Berlin where the final solution, the industrial, the industrial planning of the genocide was done. Uh, actually Hitler wasn't there but uh, his boys uh, made those plans in Wannsee and so this, this comparison was made that this was a, a plan, this cover-up was a deliberate uh, killing of a very large number of people. Uh, in the court, the courtroom was actually uh, uh, a big auditorium uh, where the trial took place. Uh, these uh, three characters in the middle are the lawyers that represented Schmidt Heine. Uh, uh, when I testified uh, the first time, they, they objected that they needed two weeks to read my book before they could cross examine me. Uh, like they didn't know about it until then. <laughs> and uh, so the judge, was, they were only holding the court every week anyway, and the judges said, well, what about that? I said, well, I can be back next Monday. And they said, okay, next one week. And uh, so then when we got back, uh, we had a much better translator the second time around, and uh, uh, it was done in an hour and a half. The uh, one reason it went so quickly was because schmidt Heine's lawyers got up and said they had no questions for me on cross-examination. <laughs> Uh, so uh, there have been various uh, uh, attempts to uh, uh, see what can be done with Mr. Schmidt. Heine Schmidt, the appeals court uh, added a few more deaths to the number, the totals of uh, two to three thousand deaths uh, billed to Mr. Schmidt Heine's account, and said uh, they were raising the criminal sentence to 18 years in jail from 16 years. The appeals court did. That was June of last year. And it was after that time that the uh, victims in Italy contacted me and they said, we'd like you to do something about the fact that Yale University gave an honorary doctor of humane letters to Schmidt Heine as a great leader of the business world in protecting the environment in 1996. We want Yale to take that back. Well, it turns out Schmidt Heine, after selling off or closing all of his asbestos enterprises, had reinvented himself as a green businessman. Uh, he, he created something called the World Business Council on Sustainable Development, led the business contingent to the Earth Summit at Rio in 1992, and uh, said that uh, uh, basically the, the, the thing that is the stock in, in all the advertisements for the oil companies today, we understand about the environment, we businessmen get it, leave it to us, we'll take care of everything. Uh, so uh, this was... And so he was given this honor by Yale University in 1996. And in uh, uh, 1996, uh, the same year, uh, uh, Schmidt Heine was uh, given the Order of the Southern Cross by the government of Brazil, uh, a similar great honor. This was uh, done by a government, uh, the highest honor that the government of Brazil can pay to a foreigner for contributing something to their society. Schmidt Heine is not stupid. He has given a lot of money to uh, uh, resource conservation groups in South America, so they won't say anything bad about him. Uh, 
And so we started uh, contacting Yale. Uh, uh, Chris Meisenkothen in uh, New Haven uh, agreed to represent the uh, Italian asbestos victims in dealing with Yale, started writing letters to Yale. The first letter said, look, we understand there may have been things you didn't know when you gave this honorary degree to this guy, but you should take it back. And uh, this is why he's been convicted by a criminal court and an appeals court and sentenced to 18 years in jail for creating an environmental disaster. And the evidence in the trial shows that he knew all about what was going on in these plants from the beginning of the time that he was running the business through the 70s and through the 80s. And, uh, and so we have uh, had these correspondence with Yale whose uh, uh, slogan is Lux et Veritas, which means light and truth. That's the slogan of Yale University, which has been giving honorary degrees since uh, 1702 and never been asked to take one back until now. So we are now trying to uh, get Yale to do the right thing. Uh, there have been most recently letters from ADAO and from the Asbestos uh, Insulation Workers Union uh, saying that this is outrageous, that Yale has been conned by this rich businessman into uh, trying to give him some uh, protection uh, against uh, expected criminal prosecution and they should, they should see it for what it is and, and not, not be played the fool. And so uh, we're continuing. We are now asking that they meet with a representative, a delegation from uh, ADAO, uh, uh, the, the president of Yale or people he designates and so we'll see what we can do. We have been getting pretty interesting coverage in uh, the Associated Press. It went national media and internationally, and it's been in the press in Brazil, it's been in the press in Italy, and if Yale were to even comprise an investigating committee, uh, that would be in the media in Italy, and that could affect the ultimate final appeal of Mr. schmidt Heine's case, because judges read the newspapers. So. Uh, thank you, Barry.